Beginning in 1956, one of San Francisco's most historic and culturally significant neighborhoods was bulldozed into a shell of its former self. Once known as the Harlem of the West, the Fillmore District was raised in the name of so-called urban renewal. Our media partner, the San Francisco Standard, has published an article that gives us a new look at the discretion, destruction as documented in a trove of photographs. And joining us live now is Standard reporter Julie Zagoras, who spoke to the keeper of the photos and learned about his personal connection to them. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Fascinating article. Loved reading it. Give us a brief history of the Urban Renewal Project in San Francisco's Fillmore District and why it was so controversial. Yeah, so urban renewal didn't happen just in San Francisco. It was actually a national project and happened in other cities across the country. But the example in San Francisco is particularly controversial because it destroyed what was such a lively neighborhood. As you mentioned, it was nicknamed Harlem of the West full of jazz clubs, full of restaurants, it had a roller skating rink, um, an extremely lively, vibrant neighborhood and a black neighborhood um, that was basically raised um, in the name of urban renewal, which was a project by the government to modernize cities. Um, and, you know, it's questionable whether this work really needed to happen. Um, the Fillmore was labeled as a slum um, in editorials and newspapers at the time and given a bad rap as to who lived there and the decrepit state of the buildings, whereas in reality, a lot of the kind of issues with the buildings were just cosmetic and did not mm. need to be torn down. And Julie, who was Ernest Burden Jr. and what did he document through his photography? Yeah, so Ernest Burton Jr. was a local architect and he really made these photographs of the Fillmore as it was being destroyed just out of concern for the buildings. As a lover of architecture, you know, he wanted to document what was happening. And again, what made the San Francisco example so controversial is that these were beautiful Victorians. Some of these buildings were lifted up and carted away and moved to other neighborhoods, which again speaks to the fact that they really didn't need to be destroyed in the first place. And so out of a love and care of for these buildings, this architect decided to go out with his own photographer at the young age of 24 and document what he saw along with his wife, who was also a photographer and an artist, Sheila Stover. And how many negatives are we talking about here are included in the Ernest Burden Jr. archive and, and what do they primarily depict? Yeah, so there's around 5,000 negatives in total and 4,000 or so are of the Fillmore District and then 3,000 are of the destruction itself. And, you know, the son, Ernest Burden III, who inherited the archive upon his father's death, told me how emotional it was to work with these photographs and these prints, looking at them day in and day out because of the violence uh, that you can really see in the images that, you know, really hadn't been seen before. The other images of the neighborhood are much more static, wide angle shots. You don't really get this up close of people's homes being destroyed. And it really gives you a sense of what was lost in that neighborhood. And speaking of what was lost, what impact did that destruction on the Fillmore District have on San Francisco's black population? I know you talk about it in the article, but can you give us some insight? Yeah, so San Francisco's black population really never recovered um, from this decimation. They moved out of the area. Uh, those who were able to stay in the city moved to the Haight-Ashbury and moved to the Bayview and other neighborhoods. Um, but we have to remember these were homeowners. These were people who owned these houses and they were given basically, you know, a certificate, a paper certificate in exchange for their home saying, oh, you have the right to return whenever the neighborhood is rebuilt. But the problem is it took years for those buildings, some of which were never rebuilt. And at that point, everyone was priced out of the neighborhood and couldn't move back. So it really had this enormous ripple effect on the black population of San Francisco and also on the, the accumulation of wealth because you had property owners suddenly who didn't have homes that they owned anymore and they were really never able to recover from that. All right. Well, Julie, thank you so much for uh, this article. It's a fascinating read. Uh, hopefully everybody uh, gets to take a look at the history and all the, the information that is in your article. We appreciate your time today.